Hello, everyone, and welcome to the VA Pals OSERA Working Group. I'm sorry, VA Pals LCAP OSERA Working Group. I need to update the name of the meeting. Um, this is Wednesday, July 23rd, 2019, and um, I am glad you are here. This is your usual reminder that we are recording. Um, Linda? Yes. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it's January 23rd despite what the weather outside your 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 window may be telling you. Uh yeah. Yeah. January 23rd, 2019. Thank you for the correction, Kathy. <laughs> um and uh yes, we are recording and will be up um should be up sometime this afternoon or tomorrow morning depending on my internet connection. Uh, we will be going over the background form, and then um, we will be talking about how to get the VA Pals LCAP software on your very own computer using a Docker image. Um, is there anything anyone wants to say before we get into the meet? Okay, uh, Dom, are you ready? I guess so, sure. Okay, take it away. Right, so I've already, I've already started to share my screen, so you should see uh, the main page for the VA Pals LCAP project here. Uh, we went over this a little bit uh, last time we met with the pie chart and everything, uh, but I'm just gonna jump right into the background form. Um, it has changed a little bit since uh, the last time we went through this. I'm going to pick, uh, this is one of my favorite, um, or it's kind of my go-to patient to test with. Um, so I'm just going to go with this one and jump right into the background form here. So uh, it's been so long, it's it's hard to remember what exactly has changed. So I'm just going to go through the whole form here. And uh, if you have any questions along the way, uh, feel free to, to jump in and ask. Um, so one of the first things is, uh, one of the first questions here is... Dom? Dom? Yeah, could you make I, it could you make it larger like a like you know the text larger could you make the text on your screen larger uh probably control plus i think it does it it's a little hard to read the uh the text oh there we go now it now you're talking thanks <laughs> no problem all right so uh the, the first question here is um any areas that you've you've worked in um, most of these are the same, although I think we added uh, Agent Orange and Burn Pits. Um, the rest of them have, to my recollection, been the same all along. Um, now I clicked other here just to kind of show you that um, throughout this form and really any form in, in this uh, suite of forms here is that whenever you click on certain fields, we'll typically ask for supplemental information, and, and that's used a lot on this background form. So anywhere you see other, uh, we usually ask you to type something in here. Um, and I'm just gonna say yes to all of these. I mean, that, that wouldn't be typical, but uh, I'm gonna do it just so you can see some of these other uh, supplemental questions that kind of pop up. Uh, so have you ever experienced any symptoms indicative of lung cancer? And again, we have uh, a few check boxes. You can check any that apply, and of course, apply another one if there is one. Uh, if you had a chest CT, uh, if you choose anything other than uh, never, uh, we'll, we'll always ask, you know, where was the test done? Uh, have you had a pulmonary function test in the last five years? And then we ask for some more information in there. And then uh, the rest of this form is, is broken up into sections uh, you know, such as cancers, pulmonary issues, diabetes, uh, cardiac diseases, vascular, and then finally an, an, a section for other. And most of them do have supplemental questions for them. So if you have family history of lung cancer, we ask, you know, what side. Uh, if you yourself had lung cancer, we ask for a year, uh, similar to some of these other types of cancer as well. And again, with the any other cancer, we ask for, you know, some, some text here, uh, along with the year and, and site. Uh, pulmonary issues or problems. Uh, again, we ask for some more questions here. And you know, I'll just jump through the rest of these so you can see what the other fields are. 
in most cases, we're just asking for a year and where it was treated. And finally, on the bottom of the page, we just have an area for comments. Uh, that's pretty open-ended. You can type whatever you want in there. And at the very bottom, you can either save it for later, if you're not quite finished with it, or submit it, and it'll record it into the system. Uh, one thing I've noticed that nothing on this page is required. Um, so if I wanted to, I could submit it just like this, and it should just take it. So I could always come back to it and see all the information that I typed in. So again, nothing's required. This entire page itself actually is optional, but the fields themselves on the page are also optional. So uh, that, that's it uh, for the background form. Uh, does anyone have any questions? All right, then I guess I'm going to pass it back to Linda. Okay. Sorry, I, have, I had a simple question. Um, how, how did you get there? Because I, you did it very quickly. I didn't see it. Sorry. Oh, so Dom, do you want to? Thank you. I forgot I was on mute here. So again, I'm going to start at the beginning here. Um, if you pick someone that's enrolled, um, well, let's, I'll pick someone that's not enrolled just to give you an example there. So we'll start here, uh, ask if you want to register the patient into the system, and you say yes. And you're given, uh, this is the intake form, uh, which is not what I want to go through right now. So I'm just going to jump over to the case review page for this person and click this new form button. Oh, OK, I see. And you can choose whether it's a background or a CT value or, or whatever. Um, so if you choose a screening background, uh, that's how you can get into the form for the first time. Um, you can always hit save for later and come back to it um, later on their case review page. So it'll show up there. OK, good. Thank you. Um, sure, thank I, just, I just noticed something, Dom. This is Ricardo. Uh, we refer on the page to the background form, but when you select it uh, as a new form, it's called screening background. Um, yep. We should probably make those the same. Uh, which would you prefer? Uh, we, I think just background's fine. Everything, everything involved here is pretty much screening, right? Right. Sure, we can make that change easy enough. Any, any other questions? Uh, yeah, one more question. Uh, Claudia is happy with this? Uh, she is. Um, she actually made uh, the request for the majority of the changes that were on that form and has reviewed it several times. And uh, I don't think I have a physical email saying so, but I believe it's been signed off on by her. So I think we're good here. Great. Art, I think Artit's on the phone, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, Artit. Uh, no, I think I think you're right. Great, thanks. Any other questions, comments? OK. So uh, Ken, oh, well, first I want to say, um, for those of you who are not planning on putting the software on your very own computer, um, you may be excused unless you really want to hear about Docker instances and installations and all that fine stuff. Um, <clears throat> thank you. And Ken, are you ready? Yeah. Um, I'm pasting a link in the chat section of this uh, chat. I it's see probably it. just easier to go to that rather than having me show you on the screen. Um, okay. Well, can you show us that on the screen? Yeah, just a moment. Can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. Um, you may have to go up to, oh, I forget which one it is. 
or I, I, I've also, there should be a invitation for you to present on your screen. Um, oh, I have to add an extension. I'm sorry. Ah. On a Mac, the GoToMeeting control panel has a play button in the top part of the panel that says show screen. And so that's an option. So uh, while we're waiting for that, um, perhaps, aha, I can see your screen now. Um, oh, good. As usual, it's kind of teeny, the, the print is, that is. So if you could better. OK, so this is the uh, document that I sent you a link to. And the instructions are pretty straightforward. Alexis wrote this out. Um, and essentially, you just follow the instructions to do the install. And then once you have the, uh, the installation done, you would open uh, a terminal session and execute these commands. This rather long command actually starts the Docker container. Luckily, you can copy and paste it. You don't have to type yeah. it in, which I agree. Um, so that's for on a Mac. I, I know that you open something else on a Windows machine. Is that? Do we yeah, have we don't instructions have a, for that? A Windows machine at the moment. Okay. Um, they're pretty much they're pretty much very similar as long as long as you install it, you could run the rest of the commands. Yeah, I was about to say there's a, a Docker for Windows on Windows 10 that works very well, and you just pull up in a command shell. And Win, the Windows one professional that is. <laughs> yes. You don't. If you have the home one, it's not going to work. So I, anyways, I'm actually. I'm actually doing it right now as we speak. So, and I'm hoping that, um, so, you know, one problem we had, well, I want to just tell you, so when you guys are ready for questions, I don't know if you're going to continue demoing, but uh, we had a problem with this and I'll describe in a moment, but keep going. Um, once the Docker container is started, it's running in the background but it's accessible on your network by using this SSH command that will connect to that Docker instance. And you'll have to log in using a password as it shows here. Once you're logged in, you type the Osera command and that puts you into the Osera environment and then the mumps command will drop you into mumps. So from this, point, from this point on, you're in the Docker environment. I'm hoping you can see the highlighting on my screen. Yes, we can see it just fine. Okay. Um, once you're you can always just log out of Docker, but that allows it to continue in the background. If you really need to stop it from within the Docker container, you'd execute these commands. And this will drop this will drop you out of the Docker container. And then that allows you to just stop it entirely. So it's not using up CPU on your system. So it's not using a processing time on your system. And then to restart it, it's a pretty simple 
thing. You don't have to type that long command anymore. Um, in the chat, Dom has um, is talking about we've got it set up so that um, you can require a log on or not. Um, and yeah, I was going to mention that. So, so yes. for the demo sites, we generally take that stuff off um, so it can be generally accessible to anyone who wants to look at the demo sites. So if you want to put this on your own machine and basically disable the authentication that um, this stock image is based off of, um, I put this command in the chat. So basically, you just jump into a mums command line and run that command that I put in here. It'll ask you if you want to turn it off, and you just say yes, and that's it. Thank you. All right. That was actually my question. I thought it might be. Exactly. <laughs> was that basically? Um, there was one is uh, one is you know I was helping Joe because we were looking at this to we're preparing this for certification and there's nothing there there's nothing in the instructions that tells you you have to go to the website and type v slash va pals. Yeah, I was just going to ask I had how how we um would look at it from the user side so. yeah so that's it's not that's not nobody tells you that so it's like you know if you're if you're getting started with this you don't know the other thing the other thing which dom just explained is um you could have uh, you could have uh, it's i actually we actually had to create a user in order to let us log in but i want so uh, he says that we could disable it. And that's obviously, again, not documented. And we didn't know. Yeah, we'll have to add that. Um, I think, uh, I think uh, Alexis and Ken didn't uh, find a uh, willing uh, non-technical person to give these a run through. Um, I should have. Uh, I should have done that because then I would have found things like that. Yeah, I'm I'm sure ran out of time. This time. Yeah. All right. Okay. And so I'm actually I'm actually running through the instructions right now myself. So I'll be at the. Uh, what's it not liking here? Oh. Never mind. Sorry. It's just uh, the it's that those uh, carrot sign those what do you call it uh, greater than signs in the commands. It doesn't like these. You should probably remove them for copy and paste purposes. Ah, uh, right. Cause yeah. Oh shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't actually see those. So one other thing I'll mention too, because I'm doing this as well, because our demo sites happen to be um, not running at the moment, so I'm doing this at the same time we're talking. Um, but once you actually get your Docker instance running, um, it would be good to jump into the Docker container, uh, run the Osera command, so you're running as the Osera user, and then update the system uh, with, uh, there's a script in uh, the bin directory called update-vista.sh. Um, I would recommend running that uh, because right now what you'll get out of the Docker container is uh, code from December 3rd. And you're going to want to update that. Mm. OK. <clears throat> yeah, I did that on the instance that I have. Luckily, it's in the information on the Docker Hub website. So I was able to follow it there, um, which luckily is, yeah, again, that start vista right there. So I just kind of mentioned here as well, so it does give you an idea of how to update it before you start running. Don, is that the command? Um, yeah, that one. Yep.
Um, it has, has the code really again. gotten updated a lot since that time? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're we're since we're since we're approaching uh, certification, we're at a phase where we are relentlessly doing cleanup right now and 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 refining unit tests. And hey, uh, in your documentation, can you change that to bin slash update vista? And I believe that um, most of the changes on the background form, rearranging it, you know, what we were just looking at have been done since December, whatever it was. So just FYI for whoever, um, if you plan to deploy this publicly, you should probably change the root password as well. Otherwise, anybody could log in into your Docker thing. Oh, right. So when you're configuring it, you should probably. Yeah, because it's exposed via SSH from, and if you don't have a firewall, it be, probably anybody on the internet could get to it. Okay. All right. Uh, Disabling, updating. All right, I'm going to run update this to myself. So let's just take a look and see what happens. Um, is there a command? Is there an, some instruction somewhere to tell you how to run the unit test? Not in this document, no. Okay. Yeah, that. I don't know whether that should properly go in this document or not. Um, it or is in that, the technical manual. Right. In the technical manual. All right. Would you mind telling us where that is? We will. Since, um, the, since the technical manual isn't finished yet, it isn't uh, anywhere that's publicly available. Um, but when it is, we'll we'll put it out. Okay. And we'll try to. Get uh, what is test. what is the command, uh, Alexis? What is the command to run the unit test? Uh, Alexis is not here, but. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is Larry. You can do. Uh, if you want to do the unit test, there is a. Uh, Sammy UT, S A M I U T is the name of the routine, and you can run the routine from the top that will run the unit tests, or you can do coverage uh, up here and the name of the routine, in which case it will run all the unit tests, plus it will give you the coverage. Uh, and as long as I'm on, I should mention that the, uh, the coverage may have dropped at a couple percentage points right now because we are still editing some routines, and that means making some small changes in the, uh, in the unit test. So it's working and working well, but uh, it may drop a couple of percent while we, while we modify some unit tests for new routine. And that's oh, the uh, name of the unit test routine again? It's uh, S-A-M-I-U-T, I believe is the name of it. Right, and Linda put in the, and if you do coverage, it, it not only runs all of them, but it, uh, it will then, show you what the uh, coverage is for each routine and the overall coverage as far as uh, the lines. Okay. Thank you. So what's the command again to just run the unit tests themselves? Uh, you can just, it, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you can I was going to say, <laughs> if anybody's going to run the unit tests right now while we're online, uh, tell us and maybe you could share your screen. You can see it, you can see it happen. I'm, I'm actually running them right now. So, Sam, can you share your screen? I can certainly share my screen. Thank you.
All right, are you seeing my screen yet? We are. Yeah. Good. All right, so it's actually running the unit test right now, and there are some failures. Um, but anyways, I let's just start from the top. And um, so I'll just start from the very top just to show you what happened. What happened. So um, I did the Docker pull like this. And then I did the Docker run, but when I copied it, it contained these little guys, so that did not work. So I removed them and I ran this. Now that works, uh, except I had port 9080 being taken, so I just had to adjust it to something else. So here it is with 9082. And too bad Joe Snyder is not here because he's the one who needs to know this. <laughs> Uh, he was able to get this far, but nobody told us about this update Vista thing. We really needed to know. Because I am here. Joe is You're here. You're here. Good. Thanks, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been following along, and I'm running the test on a, a different machine, so I can't show you my copy. All right, that's good. That's good. That's wonderful. All right. Yeah. So, uh, Sorry, I joined a little late, everybody. Sorry about I that. did the uh, update Vista, and I got all of this. So, and... I'm also recording this, so anybody okay, who wants yeah. to watch it again, and um, we'll be updating the instructions based on the feedback we're getting. Good, and so I ran the update Vista and it did all of this. There's a huge bunch of stuff it's doing. And then I started running the unit tests. These are compilation errors. I should have probably compiled that first. Um, there's a compilation error in the code. That's probably something you guys need to look at. And um, so, and where it's moving on and it's running the tests and it's zeroed something and here we are. And we have 180 tests, five failures, one error. That's very respectable. And I want to try the website thing. So is it? It's supposed to be working, right? And I got three failures and one error. <laughs> you got three failures. Oh yeah, that's fine. That's good. But I did get that. I did get eighty-nine percent coverage when I ran the coverage report. So maybe there's a difference between running. Oh, you and you run cover the co I did not run the coverage entry point, and that yeah. is coverage. Here we go. Cover. And I think it's covering. It's all work. Yeah. But I got 89% um, coverage, uh, okay. 3,467 out of 3,866. Nice. Oh, here we go. So, great coverage. So, slash VA pals there. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And here is that username and password. So, so it, did you guys create a username and password that anybody could use, or in general, do you expect people to disable it? Uh, there is in, in Vista, um, this is Larry, there is in Vista a number, I think about nine, of parameters, Sandy parameters. And one of those parameters as the access and verify uh, of a user for testing all this. Oh. So you, you can find the access and verify there. The other thing I should mention, is, as long as I'm blabbing, is if you call this from CPRF, the other change that needs to be made, um, which doesn't relate to setting up your Docker really, is that when CPRS you go to tools, you have to go into Vista, into the parameter for CPRS tools, and change it to look at your instance rather than out of a Um I probably haven't said that very well, but. I think you will only see that if you see it in CPRS. So if you connect using CPRS here, you're gonna, you're, uh, you're not gonna. It, it goes. It the tools menu goes to another server, not this server. It does uh, because yeah. it, it looks at the parameter. So there's a CPRS tools parameter that tells it where to go, and you have to edit that. And of course, we don't know what that is until you until you set up your Docker and. and yeah, and, that's true. Anyway. Uh, is that included in the 
um, configuration section. Uh, here, here. Let's just do next our list and Sammy. No, it's not. We'll need to include that. Uh, where default default? I uh, hear. I see it. Access record. Here you go. That's good. That's good. That looks good enough. We'll try that. So can you explain a little bit more about the test users? Um, because we were... Here we go. Look at that. That worked. That's good. Yay! So it's not a Vista user. So looking in 200 when we were looking yesterday, Sam didn't do anything, right? No, it, this is actually a Vista user. It is a Vista user, except that they never. <laughs> that's that's the only that's the only way we know that there's a what the access and verify code are because they're hashed. Well, how come we don't see those in mind? You don't see that. So if you do xpar list and then type Sammy A C C V E R like this, do you see that? By entity. Sorry? XPAR list. OK. Yeah, I understand. Sorry. OK, you got that? All right, good. So here, let me just try this guy. Hit submit. And all right, this is good. Um, I suppose I'll click on report. Looks really nice. <laughs> That's the only form I know how to do, or was it? Yes, it is, right. Create new form, because that's the one we saw today. Uh, never, pulmonary, no. I'm sure this is really entertaining. You don't actually have to answer them. Oh, you don't. Because no. they're not required. All right, good. Submit. Very good. So where's today's date? Yep, here it is. Very good. Yay. So am I not, I thought that you're supposed to, at least most Vista applications now, you're supposed to blank out the first uh, five digits of the social security number. These aren't real patients and those aren't um, no, I know, social I security know numbers. When you, when you deploy it, uh, aren't you supposed to like blank these out? The guidance we got from the VA is that they're allowed to use uh, full social security numbers and if they want to. Okay. So that's, uh, we were told, I mean, I thought that too. I thought <coughs> we uh, last five would be, uh, all we'd show on the screens but they are uh, in the current system they have they show full so social security numbers that they have done <coughs> they've asked the question have gotten permission to continue to use social security numbers okay so. mrs rick uh question for you guys uh when would when would the social security number change on a on a display like this when what do you mean what do you mean well, when we have a whole column for social security number and and name, but it applies. But it's it's one patient for the entire. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> uh, so we well, can do uh, like the name. <coughs> this is modeled after the um, the the case review page of the LCAP system. Uh, this is these are the columns as they do as they do them there. No, I know. I'm just trying to understand if uh, <coughs> there would be any case in which. That that would change. Like for instance, in our, in our world, in our world, uh, uh, if the patient's name changed for some reason, they added a middle initial or something. The the, the whole name column would would change, right? Right. True, but you can't change a name in the system. <laughs> it's uh, it's a big deal to change the name, as I understand it. Um, obviously, people do it, like when they get married. Um, but 
I know that in the VAs, um, only certain people can make changes like that. And uh, I believe VISTA does not make it easy. The main time that that the main time it would come up is if you had two records that you discovered were duplicate records and you ran the duplicate record merge software, um, one or the other might have an incorrect name or, a, or an incorrect SSN and the merged record would have whatever they decided was the correct one. And then in addition, you're, you're allowed to legally change your name under a variety of circumstances. Vista supports all that and the population of this data is coming out of the Vista side system. So it could happen on the on the um, on the VA PALS LCAP server that uh, that the SSN or the name change. But generally speaking, uh, what we would do then, <laughs> uh, we have we have not populated uh, any code that would try to deal with noticing if um, if the Vista side software had changed and then updating our graph. Uh, because uh, we're not anticipating people using most of the Vista software on the VA PAL server. We're just using it as our foundation. But in theory, the capability is there, and you know, some future enhancement um, could make it so that uh, so that the graphs get populated with changes like that when a patient merge occurs. Yeah, I'm not suggesting we address this at this late stage, but maybe in the future we, we might consolidate this. It seems a quarter or a third of the page is dominated by something that isn't going to change. Or 99% of people, maybe 100. Well, um, then exactly. that is something that that um, we should get a request for because um, that is based on the LCAP form, like George was saying. And since we're using their forms as our foundation. This would be, uh, so all further uh, modifications will go through a process. Um, that that would uh, anything like this would go through that process, and if it comes out on the other side, let's fix it. It'll 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 come to the team. Mm hmm Exactly. Okay. Well, I see that uh, Sam is having some fun here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what all right. This this has yeah, been very helpful. Um, Thank good. You, That's very good. I'm I'm glad we got all of our questions uh, clarified on what on how to run the unit tests and how to get the code and everything. So, so this is an excellent time for for people um, between between this week's Osera call and next week's Osera call to try out these instructions, try out setting up your own Docker instances, and anything. Not only anything that's just wrong or that's or that's missing, but anything that's even just confusing or not clear, let us know because this is an excellent time to fix the manuals so before we submit it for certification. So I imagine that um, the instructions, the link that Ken gave us at the beginning here, those will be updated as we take into account the feedback that we've got from this meeting. But um, I don't expect that um, the changes will be complete until like tomorrow at the very earliest. So maybe by Monday morning we'll have gotten um, our feedback from this incorporated. So don't get all um, excited if you go and look at the instructions and they're not changed yet. You need a little time. So what else? Anything else we want to, um, any other questions or comments about the Docker um, images, containers, and the instructions? Uh, are any of these uh, instructions reflected in the, doc in the GitHub repository? Is that document we're looking at, is it versioned there? Uh, don't. I don't think it's there yet. Um, the, okay. As you can see, this is a um, Google Doc, so yeah, I, I understand that. Okay. Yeah, so it should be there soon, but it's not there yet. Is is my expectation? Anything else? Well, since we have Joe and others. Almost Sarah on the line, uh, Sam and others. But uh, right now we're waiting on intake form changes, which will have to be implemented once once they're settled. And 
I'm hopeful that um, approximately a month from now we'll, we'll be ready for certification. Uh, I don't know. Does anybody have any other thoughts about that timing? So I believe that on Friday um, we're supposed to be having a meet there's supposed to be a meeting where hopefully the intake form is going to be um, locked down for changes and then we can implement them. So in, and in the meantime, we're doing some cleanup. We're doing things like this. Um, we're going through, um, we have some cruft in like our documents files and things like that, that we'll be taking out and just doing, you know, the little things that need to be done before um, it's ready for prime time. So uh, is there a reason or is it possible, would it be possible to overlap certification with the process of us updating one of the forms? <clears throat> Joe has advised us not, uh, not to do that in the past. Joe, do you have any thoughts on that? <clears throat> waiting for the mute unmute to happen. Um, we would prefer that that not happen. Um, in the past, we have done that where you know, we've discovered problems during the review and we've moved reviews from revision to revision. So another bit of certification, another bit of certification. But we would prefer that that not happen. Um, you now, it is a balancing act between when are we ever going to really be done versus, you know, is this good enough? But um, given given my my I would request no, but we're willing to work with you if there's no choice. Okay. That. <laughs> yeah. And, how, and about and about how long do you estimate the certification might take? Um, depends. Um, for smaller submissions, we get it done in in average two weeks. We have a one peer re one review per meeting. And we meet every week. Um, for longer submissions when we have more questions to answer, well, we don't have more questions to answer, but more things to look at, like the entire bolus of a code of, of, of the VA files work, um, it might go longer than that, but it's typically done fairly quickly. You mean more than two weeks and less than what? Less than a month. Oh, okay. Uh, the final review is pretty much always done in one meeting. It's the peer review that tends to last longer as we do more bits of code review and determining whether or not the unit tests work and the functional testing of actually running into it and, and clicking on things just could take longer than um, than one meeting. But we typically get it done in two weeks. And I imagine that the more organized and documented the code is, the quicker it is for you. Absolutely. Just what we did today has already blocked up lopped off a bunch of time for me um you know removing the login and figuring out how to get into the web pages was something that i would have had to do you know before certification has started and since i can do it now we can start certification just that much sooner. awesome uh anything else ricardo uh that's that's fine i i, I felt we we owed a uh an update to to, to Joe in particular, because I had told him in December we were ready. <laughs> we were going to be ready. <laughs> it's okay. It, it, as a software guy, I know exactly what that feels like. Oh, yeah, we done soon. And then it just never quite works out the way you want. So um, we are ready. And we're, we just finished up a certification. We think we're going to be starting another one, which again will be two weeks. But we think by the time you're ready to submit, we'll be ready for you. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Um, I have a question regarding. I'm looking. I'm looking at some of the M code. So which where there's a bunch of M code that does not belong to VA pals, and I wanted to know if this is some is going to be part of the submission and how are we going to deal with X indexing it and so on. Hi, this is Rick. Hi, Rick. Um, I have an answer. So there, there are three categories of code um, associated with this, okay, four categories of code associated with this project. One, of course, is that we've got to be applying um, Vista VA patches to our server as we go, but of course, that's obviously outside the, the scope of the certification. The second category is in order to get all of this running on the platform it's on, we've had to import a number of um, changes to the Vista code base from the community, including work you've done. And um, 
we're assuming that that is also outside the scope of the of certification. So if you see occasional changes to the broker or to other things, um, you know, those are just in, in ensuring that we've got a, a functional system. Yeah. Uh, what's what remains that the bulk of the changes fall into two categories. Um, there's the changes that are that are what you're certifying, which is the actual VA PALS LCAP application itself under the SAMI namespace. Yeah. OK. Good. And, then the, the last category is there's a body of code for a new emerging infrastructure layer, the MUMPS Advanced Shell, and that's also outside the scope of the certification because it's not a VISTA application. It's a, it's a new foundational layer being inserted under VISTA but above the, um, um, above the MUMPS implementation itself and eventually will we'll be under the um, sponsorship and management of the, of the MUMPS Development Committee as a, as a platform that people can, can base things on. But it's it's uh, it's ready to be used in in production in a few settings like this where where we know the target audience and can work closely with the developers um, but it's not yet ready uh, to be opened up to the whole month's world so it doesn't have any apis it's all private subscriptions and and, and similarly because it's um not vista because it's it's more in the category of of kind of standard libraries uh, it's not clear how you would do certification what what programming standard would it be required to meet? Well, it can't be the Vista one because it's not about Vista. Things like that. They're just they open up too many questions. I think at this time. For no, I certainly I certainly agree with you. Um, however, I'm looking at some of the Mash code and some of it calls Vista code, which I don't think is appropriate. With well, no condition to check even if it exists or not. Yes, eventually it won't call Vista code once it gets generalized. But as we say right now, the Mumps Advanced Shell is a work in progress, so it still contains the scaffolding uh, that was necessary to get the first three um, applications that are that are using it um, functional. Okay. So again, that's another reason why, in you know, in the long term, Mash won't rely upon anything in Vista. It would only be the other way around. But we're not ready for that yet. Okay. Sounds good. Is the are there so you mentioned changes to uh, Vista code that's not here? Do you actually have have a list of what you changed in Vista? Well, I have um, some of it is stuff you already have, like your kernel for GTM utilities. No, I, I understand, but how about did you you said you had to change the broker, for example? I don't remember changing the broker. Right. We have a little we have a little broker module that is currently under the SAMI namespace because so that it can be unit tested as part of this package, but eventually it'll need to migrate out to XWB. Um, and that's some stuff Larry and you wrote together, I believe. Oh, okay, okay. I see. So it's it is here. Okay. I thought I thought you actually changed the X, let's say XWB routine in Vista, and we don't know of it. No, no, but I do have. Um, there's another change. There was a fileman change. There's a there's a bug. We we can get you a list of these. But for example, there's a bug in the VA fileman code such that um, you can't do list file attributes on GTM. It crashes with a hard error every time. So list obviously, file attributes. It's obviously we needed list file attributes to work on GTM. So um, we did a bug fix. List file attributes never failed for me. I'm trying to remember where. Are, are you talking about? Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. You're saying that's that D. Is it the D the th dollar Z reference and DI util? I don't think it's Z reference, but there's a there's a cacheism in there. I forget. Yeah, what yeah. So uh, they had to be swapped out. George was trying to be helpful and trying to do something that works on both systems, but there was a yeah. bug on GTM that made it work at some point. Yes, that's right. So, okay. so you know, little things like that, and, and we can give you a list when we when we submit it for certification, so you can see what they are. But they'll all be included in the Docker instance. They are now. Well, yeah, but you know, inclusion is not documentation. We need to know what they are, especially if they need to be taken upstream. That's why I said I would give you the list. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay. What else? Anything? Okay. Um, in that case, I think we are done here today. Um, I think we have done some really good work, and I appreciate everybody's help. And we will see you next week. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. This will be a big help for us.
Bye, everybody. Bye.